become a chair, you have to be prepared to give a certain amount of time. And I think also you have to be somebody who can work with other people, who can talk with other people, and also who can chair a meeting and, and try and keep that meeting purposeful and not too long. I don't think anybody prepares you for mountains of paperwork. And you do think, oh my God, I'm, I'm never going to cope with all this. But then I just think, right, Jack, is you've got to sit down now and you've, you've got to get on with it because this needs doing. I think I've missed one meeting in 16 years, so I think, that's a, that's, I think I'm proud of that. I think, you know, a new build comes along once in a lifetime, and I'm just lucky to be here at this moment in time. One of the key roles in any school governing body is that of the chair. But what do chairs do? How do they run meetings? How do they form effective working relationships with their head teachers? And, it, it, and when they were young teachers... And what role can training play in developing the skills they need to do the job? That's the agenda for this programme. But the other issues to do with the role of the governing body can tend to be cyclic because, for example, probably the evaluation of schools is in the autumn term because that's when the data is out. In the autumn term, it is usual for the governing body to re-elect or elect its chair and its vice chair. Some governing bodies may have chosen to um, elect their chair for a longer period of time than a year, some won't. Governing bodies don't have to elect their chair during the autumn term, but those at Two Moors Primary School in Devon have chosen to do so. This is their first full meeting of the autumn term, and the current chair is Ivan Godfrey. He introduces the item in the agenda. Item four is all to do with chairs and vice chairs. May I ask for a nomination for chairman for the next year? Ivan has been nominated. I will now leave the room and allow Lorna to take over and you can discuss amongst yourselves what you do about the role of chair. Lorna. Chairs often become chairs because they're asked to by their fellow governors. Often when a member of a, a, a previous chair has said, I, I want to stand down, I've done this for long enough. And I suppose to an extent I felt I had the time uh, and the interest and I was prepared to do it. And I think that often happens with, with chairs, that there are people in the right place at the right time. Well, do I, I sit here? Yes. Uh, all right. <laughs> You've been elected chairman for the coming year. Can I, can I refuse? Four years. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Yes. Jackie Ball has been chair of the governors at Gay Elms Primary School in Bristol for only two years. Because governors are required, I'm absolutely 100% yeah. sure yeah, of that. Definitely. I'm just not yeah. sure whether staff are. Maybe we need to find that out before the audit then. Because they the only time that I didn't think I was the right person to chair mm. the governors was I was pulled into a room with the head teacher at the time and the chair of governors, and who said to me, We think you're the right person to be the chair. And I said, Well, I'm really sorry, but I've got to disagree with you there. I said, I don't think I am the right person because I haven't got the confidence. They then said to me that we think with a little bit of help from the chair who would then stand down to be vice chair that you could actually make it work. So I said I, w I was in agreement that I would do it for a term to see how it worked out and if it didn't then they would have to think again. It's children's money, so what goes insane... Richard Bevan is chair of the governing body of Bedminster Down Secondary School in Bristol where the head teacher is Marius Frank. I've been a governor now for 16 years, four years as vice chair, four years as chair. Really wanted to see the school, new school project finish, that was an aim of mine, not walk away just yet. I thought if the governors would accept me on another four year term, which they did, and I would do two more years of chair, just to see them through the process, and then blood in a new chair, and Mark, who's our vice chair this year now, will step up into chair hopefully in two years time, and I can stand down to vice chair just to assist him through the early two years of process. Matters are rising. Well, we discussed the uh, last set of minutes at the Governor's meeting, so uh, that's already been passed. So, item three, PFI update, please. But how is being the chair of Governors different from being just a member of the governing body? Can you not do it on a yearly basis, then? Issued to Governors on a yearly basis? To all governors. The main difference to being a chair to a parent governor is that you lead the governing body. You set the agendas for the governing body meetings, 
you chair those meetings and if anything goes wrong, it comes back on your head and not as a parent governor. And Jackie's had a good deal of responsibility in the two years she's been chair. The school was in special measures and some feared it would close. It didn't. The governors appointed a new head teacher and improving performance at the school has been due in part to the strong working relationship Jackie's developed with Annette Osborne. My relationship with, with Annette, we've got a very good relationship. Hi, come in. And we work very closely together. I see her on a daily basis. We do social things together as well. I have never found any problem in, you know, being a chair and separating that off from being a friend. And if there was anything that I wasn't happy with, then, then you know, then I would say to Anna, you know, I'm not happy with this. Not just go along with decisions that she makes or any other head makes, you know, that is your job really is to question is this the right thing for the school she knew the locality far better than i did she is a member of this community she knew what made it work she knew the ins and outs and in that way she's been tremendously helpful for me but i think most importantly maybe jackie knew the history of this school i came in from outside not knowing anything about what had happened before there's actually a standing joke and they say that I've got so many hats they don't know which one I should be wearing because I am a parent, I am a chair. Well, you think of a sponsored walk around the... No, they were like more of the pubs, actually. The chair of governors is in a unique position. She or he will have access to the head teacher and to information other governors may not have. And so has the responsibility of involving less experienced members, making sure they feel able to contribute. The next stage, I think, is the size of the governing body. At the moment, we're 18 because we, I think we had to be because of, of the number of pupils. Now we can choose freely whether we stay the same, whether we have more governors, fewer governors or what. Your views, please. And please, you know, I'm, I'm open to all comments. I think you've, you've pretty much got a person covering each committee, if you see what I mean, haven't you? I, think I see being a support to the head teacher as being really very important indeed. But support doesn't mean just saying yes. Support means challenging, questioning, and the head teacher will respond to that and will welcome that and will ask for that. It's really, as a governing body, we have to question Roy about any of what is in here and then to say yes we support this, we approve of this and to be aware of it uh, and to come back really at the end of the year and say well how are we, how are we developed and what, what have we got to show for it. Any questions? Um, now, I happen to have a background in education but lots of my fellow governors have not got a background in education but so it's important that the head can come and explain to them why certain decisions are being made, why the school is adopting this or that policy. At Bedminster Down School in South Bristol, Richard Bevan has adopted a slightly different approach to being the chair. While he's involved himself with some of the practical initiatives in the school, like the new building for which he's lobbied over many years, he feels he doesn't have to see the head teacher on a day-to-day -day basis. I think Maris is great. We get on really, really well. I don't see him every day of the week. I wouldn't want to because he's a busy man. But I come here as often as I can, but I'm not in his way. I like to think I'm not in his way. If he needs some support or a decision being made, he does have a telephone, mobile phone, or an email address. So um, I think the balance is right, because in his role as a senior manager of a senior school, he's loaded with enough details and day-to-day issues as it is. I just don't want to impinge upon that whatsoever. I meet with the chair formally uh, at least once a month. Uh, to, through the subcommittees and the committee meetings. But on an ad hoc basis, we might meet up another once a month if an issue arises. For example, uh, a letter's written to the governor complaining about the head teacher and or something that's happened in school, and he seeks clarification of, on it before he writes back to the parent. Um, and equally, if a budget issue or an LEA issue arises that impacts on the school, I might run it past the, the chair first. For the last 10, 15 years, um, the governing body has been so keen on trying to get a new school for Bedminster Down. They put in many hours on top of their jobs to define what the new school might look like, define the vision behind the new school, and involved in the selection of the preferred bidder for the process. And that's a testimony really to the, to the effort the governors have put in over the years. 
hopefully the, the aspirations of the school will be obviously move into the new build, demolish the old build and, and start afresh with a brand new building with fantastic facilities. And then hopefully what will happen then is that will nurture the pupils and the staff to develop their skills and take the school forward and improve and improve and improve upon the results. Can a chair of governors stay in post too long? Richard Bevan's been chair for over five years, so he's decided it will soon be time to step down. The governing body has discussed the need for a smooth transition, and Mark Diamond is the governor who'll take over. Principally, my role is going to be to shadow Richard as the chair of governors at the moment, to understand from him particular nuances and things that have to go to being a chair of governors, understanding the relationship with the head teacher. I think it would be very good for my sort of personal development to actually be responsible for filling a role like that. But I think above all, it's a huge opportunity. Like a lot of governors, Mark Diamond is developing his understanding of the role of the chair with the help of training courses provided by his local education authority. An increasing number of LEAs provide training for governors, as well as information and advice through newsletters. In this day-long event on the role of the chair, Judy Burgess is leading a discussion about subcommittees. Then you avoid having all the governors having to be involved in everything, and you design committees as tools to deal with the different issues. I thought the training was useful. Um, I, I, one of the most useful aspects of it actually was just the opportunity to talk with other governors, um, get to share their ideas and understand the issues that other schools face and how they're tackling those. I thought some of the ideas that came out in terms about how to go about um, coaching other governors and putting in place development plans and succession plans um, for governors was good. And the idea of seeing the, um, the chair of governors as a coach really, um, not just a sort of personal authority, but as a coach to bring along the whole governor team. I was vice chair last year and a governor the year before, so I'm fairly new still. One of the things I'm going to raise at our next full governing body meeting is doing a skills audit. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to be very difficult to develop other governors if you don't know what their strengths and weaknesses are. Yeah. I think we, we do act as a critical friend. And because the governing body really represents a huge cross-section of the community, come from all walks of life, they will bring to governance perspectives that are perhaps foreign to the person who has been a teacher all of his or her life. And that's really very, very important. So for owning the monitoring and being the critical friend, you are saying we get information from within the school, we go and see it at work in the school, so we corroborate it that way, and we get outside information from the school about its performance and corroborate it that way. That's being challenging, as long as you own those three as a triangle. It's very frightening, you know, the prospect of being a parent governor. But once you go to, like, the rules and responsibilities of governors and performance management and SEN training, it all slots into place. And without that training, I think you'd be a bit lost, really. The advice my head gave me all those years ago was, don't step out of role. And I began to look worried because I didn't know my role. And he said, your role is to stay lay. It's to stay as a lay person because that's what you are. In understanding about a school improvement plan, you stay lay. The third piece of advice was to drink a lot of red wine. <laughs> and the fourth piece of advice was to make very good use of black plastic sacks to pri prioritise the paperwork that's going to face you.